healing for breakthrough. Ah, poverty bow in the name of Jesus. Makari, yakari, kawa tola leo. Makari ana boshi, mari ana da, nekari ana bashi ata. Makari ana boshi, ki awa tola leo, awa ferio, awa ferio, kawa tola. Move my teen, I miss this morning. Move my teen, I miss this morning. Hey, we give you room in the space. We give you room in our hearts, oh God. We give you room, Mariana Basia, in our lives, Lord. Nekeriana Basia. Ah, Awa Ferio, Ki Awa Tolaleo. Lay Badewayo Jacario Catolo We worship you, Jesus. Maradada Bashikete Kede Matadi and Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. You alone are deserving of the blessing. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We flow to you, Lord Jesus. We flow to you, Lord Jesus. We come unto 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 you, Lord Jesus. We draw near unto you, Jesus. We draw near unto you, Jesus. We come unto you, Lord Jesus. We come unto you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We come unto you, Lord Jesus. We come to drink from you. We come to draw from you. We draw strength from you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder. Thank you, Jesus. Consider all. The works thy hands hath made I see the stars Lord I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe 
displayed. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands has made, I see the stars. And I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my soul. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee.
the wonders of your mighty world. You are my comfort, my shelter, my shelter, my tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, let every breath. Oh, that I am. Never cease to worship. Never.
Let's go ahead, worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him is worthy. Worship him is worthy. Worship him is worthy. Nothing, nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise. To the promise. To the promises. To the promises. To the promises. To the promises of God. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Oh, nothing compares to it. Nothing compares to it. Nothing compares to it. You are tired. You are frustrated. Let the spirit of the living God remind you of God's promises towards you. Oh, let joy, let hope well in your heart again this morning. As the promises of God towards you are waking in your heart this morning. Nothing compares to it. 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 Magadodo sto libre de gede zataya gadosto kite zete le gadas to kite soto libre de gede zataya magadadado zato libre de gede mata siketo sto kite zete le branda gadas sota libra das te kite soto libre dosta nente zete gedi le branda gadada dos soto soto libre de gede le gadusto kite zete mato soto libre dosta nante zeta ma kite soto soto libre dosta libre de gede mata ta soto libre de de dusto lite zeta. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. You know, very interestingly, before, before I call um, our guest minister up this morning, I just want us to pray. It's just about this, the promise of God. You know, very interesting in scripture, Abraham went to meet God and says that God, seeing that I go childless, after God has given him a promise, he went back to God and saying that, God, you see that I go childless. Maybe per adventure. This, my servant, will be the one that will be the heir. And what did God do? God just took him out and showed him the stars in the sky and says that, can you count the stars in the sky? That so shall your descendants be. He says that you see the sands on the seashore. You can't count them. So shall your descendants be. And you know, sometimes and oftentimes the things that are happening around us seems to want to choke that promise that God has given to us. But we need to come back to God because it is only Him that can re-energize us and that can recast that vision back onto us. And I want you to just take a moment this morning and just, just lean and yield to the Spirit of the living God. And allow Him to begin to paint the pictures of God's promises towards you. To begin to paint the pictures of his, his plans and purposes for your life. The Bible says the plans that I have towards you are good. It says that to give you a hope and a future. Father, we pray this morning, oh God, we lean to your spirit. We receive strength, we receive energy by your spirit. Father, we ask, oh God, that your spirit will recast the vision that you have given unto us will paint the picture of the future for us. will paint the picture of your plans and purposes for us. That hope and faith and energy will come back unto us. That Father, this morning we yield to you because we are in your presence. Your word says that we should come to the throne room of grace to obtain mercy, to receive grace in time of need. Father, we, receive, we come to your presence this morning. And Father, oh God, we ask that we will meet with you. Lord, we will encounter you. You will indeed speak to us. Father, you will show us, you will show us the way to go. You will show us and instruct us the directions to follow. That Father, we will leave this place re-energized. We will leave this place refocused. We will leave this place with joy and hope bubbling in our hearts. Father, we thank you for your son that you have prepared for us this morning. We thank you, God, because he's a gift to the body of Christ. 
And we know, God, that you will use him to bless us and to impart in our lives that which comes from you this morning. We return all the praise and glory back unto you. In Jesus' name we're praying. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to church this morning. We also want to welcome our, um, the congregation online. Thank you for joining church this morning. Uh, this month, we've been looking at the topic on impartation, and particularly the Real Success Seminar. We've actually focused on leadership impartation. And for me, topics like this always bring to for some of the things that we really, really don't take cognizance of. And this morning, we have in our midst Reverend Badi Ogulano. We'll be ministering to Ross in this service and at the network service. We want to welcome you, sir. Uh, so, without is <laughs> you know, how many of you know that Pastor Bade, sorry, Reverend Bade, attends Global Harvest Church? He always, sorry, sorry, Harvest House. Oh, sorry, sorry, Harvest House. And he always says it repeatedly that Pastor Niye Boda is his pastor and um, uh, Pastor Adiola Boda, they are his pastors. But I also want to add this morning that. Reverend Badio Glano is a member of the Bridge Network. Is <laughs> a member of this house. Is a friend to this house. And we want to thank you every time we call upon you. You're always um, glad to join us. We know we are ready for you this morning. And we know God is ready to bless us through you. Let's welcome Reverend Badio Glano this morning. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you very much, Pastor. We give God praise for the opportunity to be here this morning. And I believe that God has a wonderful thing for us this morning and this day. Because in the first service and the second, as well as the second service, I believe that God will give unto us and impart unto us what uh, no man can do. Because power belongs to him. Hallelujah. James chapter 4, verse 2 will be our text. <clears throat> but we are going to pray first. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to study your word together. We shall be blessed. You have some things in mind for today's meeting. Bring it forth by your spirit so that we will be able to do exactly as you want us to do. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> James chapter 4 verse 2 says, King James Version of the Bible says, Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. You don't have because you don't ask. So the way to have is by asking. That is the first thing we are looking at. You can't give what you don't have, but how do you have? You have not because you ask not. So the first thing is by asking. That is how to have. Many people have thought that uh, people that ask questions, they don't know. You know, the most intelligent people ask questions. The most intelligent people. You won't get better if you don't ask questions. Why are we where we are now? You know one of the reasons why it takes a lot of... Uh, difficulties in being a politician in Nigeria is because of insincerity. There is a reason why we are where we are now, but people don't want to ask direct questions. For example, why are you poor? Don't mystify it. Don't spiritualize it. There are reasons why you were poor. Why was I poor? I was poor because my parents didn't teach me how to be rich. Why didn't they teach you? Because they didn't know. How do you know they were poor? 
ask questions. And the truth of the matter is, I needed to ask myself, will I be better off than them? Not likely. Why, if I don't change what I learn from them? So ask yourself questions. Why are you where you are? Don't spiritualize it. The major difference between the white and the black is that black man over-spiritualize life. An ordinary person selling will blame co-tenants or other people in the same business that they are the reasons for his failure. They are not the reasons for your failure. Ask pinpoint direct question. Do you know many people will do better if they stop praying? Yeah, if they stop praying. My sister looked at me quizzically. The reason is this. Let's sit down and think, since you have been praying, how much have you achieved? Maybe not much. You are still a survivalist. So what does that tell me? <clears throat> Maybe you have not yet thought through and ask direct questions yet. Pastor, they said I'm lazy. Maybe you are lazy. Ask direct question. You have not because you ask not. How do I move my business from where I am to another place? Ask direct question. That is the first thing. Can we get better? How can we get better? Direct questions. Very intelligent people ask questions. Along the line, I realized that the ministry was getting bigger, bigger. So I needed to ask questions. If I continue like this, will I be able to sustain it? I needed to ask questions. So what did I discover? I came to conclusion that I needed to work on my leadership ability. Are you there? I am far from being there, but I ask questions. One of the things that prompted my questioning was that people started demanding for my teachings on tapes. I found out that I had more demand that I can, than I can sustain. So I needed to ask questions. So the first thing is, ask yourself questions. You want to move from here to that place? Ask yourself questions. But there is one, something under that. Do you notice many times God will not ask you a question that you don't have answer to. He will not. In fact, most of the time when he asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He wants you to ask yourself that same question. That is how God operates. He won't ask you a question that you don't have answer to. He just wants to point your attention to the answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I had an experience on radio today. <laughs> I just couldn't speak in English or Yoruba again. So I had to leave. I'm just wondering. So sometimes that thing just come like that. I really wonder. Anyway, that's by the way. So we are here. Amen. Let me look at people that are very kind so that I'll be kind and I'll be able to speak English. 
Listen, ask questions. Why, why, why am I where I am? Then how do I get to where I'm going to? Number two thing, the underlining thing I was to talk about is that when a small child, when we are growing up, what God implants in us is zeal. Only God knows how many times I dreamt that I would become a preacher. That is how he builds that thing. He will build the thing in you, the desire in you. But when it comes to two plus two is four, to get that thing achieved is in our hand. Let me say it again. God showed Joseph, you will be the leader of your brethren. How is more of Joseph's duty and responsibility? God planted in you the desire to be in business, to help ministry, to sponsor God's venture on the earth. It is the desire you will build. How to go about it a lot of times is in your hand. And one of the things to get there is asking questions. How do I move from here to this place? God will show you, you are going to that throne. How you will get there, you will find out. Sometimes the way he gets us there can be very funny. It may not be what we think. You know what he said? He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Many times, because he knows what you and me we need there, he will pass us through some channel to equip us with that thing that we will need. But to start with, all he will do is that he will show you where you are going to. It's my job and your job to sit down and find out how to get there. And I said, that comes first by asking questions. How do I move from where I am to that place? How do you become a leader? You have to work it. Oh, some people are born with more natural inclination. But majority of us, we need to sit down and study the how. I always believe that to become a leader, the first thing is that you need to learn how to make decisions, even tough decisions of life. Brethren, you cannot make decisions if you are afraid to fail. There is no one that has never failed before. It's unfortunate the example I want to give, but I know God is not ashamed. When he made Adam and Eve, they failed him. So that is the genesis of humanity. We are all children of dropouts. They were dropped out of Eden. <laughs> so we are, you are welcome. If you are afraid of failing, you, will not, you won't achieve anything. But you've got to learn to make decisions. That is what asking questions leads to. When you ask questions, how do I get to where I'm going to? The next thing is decision. Ability to follow. Listen, everyone. There is something that always amazes me. And probably you will also will have thought about it. Especially now considering the condition we are in Nigeria. Why do white people seem to achieve much without praying, without fasting, without night VG? You hardly read any magazines and see them have all night VG. Why? It's as if their own life is based on thinking and they are making it because they ask questions one of the most 
one of the diseases that affects us generally in the nation is the problem of casting blame on your neighbor. When something happens, APC will say, is it not Jonathan? Seven years ago, Jonathan has gone. In fact, if people go to hell, they will blame Jonathan. <laughs> How do we make progress like that? We can't. Once you shy away from making decisions and being responsible, we cannot advance. Every one of us can improve on our leadership ability, but it starts with making decisions. Do you make decisions and tough decisions? You, you, you need to. You need to. If you are not endowed with leadership, natural leadership inclination, you need to walk it. You need to walk it. And it starts by asking relevant questions, and the question will lead to decision making. Remember the prodigal son? He asked himself a question. How many of my father's hired servants are faring better? The, the genesis of his exodus started with questions. The next thing is that he said, I will go. He took a decisive step. You don't get much unless you go after it. Qualities, abilities can be achieved. And if we actually listen to God, he will lead us so places that will equip us for what we will need for our destination. Look at it like this. God is so much bigger than us. He knows the future more than we know the past. Many years ago, I was led to be an assistant pastor in a church. Only God knows this far, that time. 1992 is how many years ago? 30 or something. Is it 30? Yeah, 30 years ago. In that church, sincerely, they did not quote one scripture that I didn't know. Sincerely, they did not say anything that, I've, that I didn't know. In all humility, I didn't learn Bible there at all. You know, it may sound like pride, but it's not pride. If you also go to primary school, you won't learn anything new. So it's not pride if you say, I didn't learn anything new. But... I learned something that is not Bible. It's not Bible that God sent me there to go and learn. What are the two things? I learned how to dress. <laughs> I came from this local evangelical setting. We don't consider dressing as anything. Dress. We don't even know how we dress. We just move. Because Jesus is coming. There was one day my reverend asked me and said, Pastor Gwadi, go back home. You can't appear in the presence of people of God like this. <laughs> and when I was going home, I was looking at myself. I said, I'm handsome. <laughs> I, I was really, it was funny to me. So I learned how to dress there. I'm not even a fantastic dresser now. I don't dress. I just say, uh, sometimes you get so busy, you don't even have time for things like that. Bless my darling heart. So I didn't pass very well, but I think 
I scored 50 eventually. Oh. Then, I was to learn to talk money. That was the second thing. God needed to impart that thing to me. He knew I would need it now. This is why I always believe that live an ordinary Christian life. God will still direct you to places where they will impart unto you what you will need in the future. You notice our line of thought is you can't give what you don't have. I'm t- telling you how to have. I said the first thing is that learn to ask questions. Number two, well, the question will lead to decision making. Number three, people are God's method. He will impart unto you what you also can give. Like Peter and John said, what I have I give unto you. How will he do that? By causing your path to pass through people that will impart the same quality to you. Don't run from learning from people. People are God's method. People are God's method. You know, when we were in school, some courses, some subjects are very cheap. Yoruba. Uh, oh, Yoruba may not be cheap to you, but to some of us, it's just cheap. Uh, which other one? Economics. All those ones. But there is additional mathematics. When I was in secondary school, I kept thinking, what's the problem? We don't even understand math. They now call one additional mathematics. <laughs> the, the, the way my make is is this. I like to understand. I don't like cramming. I like to understand. Till I finished in school, I, do, I still do not know the meaning of that additional. I said, why? What do, <laughs> why is it different from maths? Is it no maths? I kept thinking, if I can understand the meaning of additional, I will capture that subject. Because I like understanding what. Some are difficult like that. It's the same thing. God will make you to pass through some people that are difficult. They are like that additional mathematics. But you can't graduate, you can't pass unless you pass them. Unless you pass their test. <coughs> we are looking on how to have so that you can give. The way to have is by God imparting unto you what you will need through people. And some of them will be difficult people. I, when I got to this church, God wanted me to learn to talk about money. There was no way I would be good in talking about money. From every angle, we were poor. Poor people can't talk money. The church that I was going, we were all poor. You can't believe it that our church was uh, about... uh, Maybe half of this place is as long as this. But guess what? We didn't have space for car park. It's like it didn't come to the mind that people can come with cars. Because people don't go with cars. Only one brother I can remember had a car. So when you are in an environment like that, there is no way you will not be poor. So I was configured to be poor, but the problem is not even lack of money, it's the poverty mentality. So God needed to get rid of it. How will he do that? He led me to a church where they gave me only one assignment, collecting offerings. Every service we had, all I do in the church is to collect offering. Whether regular service, weekly service, Sunday service, wedding ceremony. So anytime I stand up like this, people will have started bringing out their purses. (laughs) Because that's all I do. There was one day I was like, God, what is this? Because before I was led to that place, I was a, a pastor. Over a church in the village, Ifuamuro. 
and God was the one that said, come to Ibadan. I said, how can you leave someone who is in charge of a church to now come and be collecting offering under somebody else? It was as if somebody stood behind me when I had a voice that said, when you are pastoring in the village, you didn't teach my children there to give, and so you hinder me from blessing them. Because in that village, I just thought that villagers can't have money. We were having a meeting five times a week. I was collecting offering only once. So God said, no, you didn't teach them. You blocked me from blessing them. That is why, as a pastor, don't apologize to collect offering. Whatever anybody says. That is God's method of blessing brethren. God didn't organize it that we bless brethren by welfare posts. Welfare came in in the New Testament because of the crisis in town. There was famine all over. Give to God. Use your sense. God will bless everybody. Don't be a welfare specialist. And by the way, there is no better way to make people stop coming to church than for the church to lend them money. They don't pay back, then they will stop coming. Don't borrow people money as a church. Pastor, you may borrow people money from your pocket. You're on your own. <clears throat> because that's just the, from experience, I found out. So, it led me to that place. I, all I was doing was collecting. It was imparting unto me what I will have. Every one of us will end up having. If you can just follow his leading. It will lead you to have by making you to come across people that he will impart unto you substance that you can dish out later on. He said, what, I mean, they said, what we have, we can give unto you. Do you know sometimes these days we get so busy and we don't read? I notice a trend. That was something. You see video flying. Video that does not add to your academic or mental growth or development. They just waste it. There are many people that they will say, I'm 35 years old. You are not. Because five years of your life has been taken by WhatsApp. <laughs> and Facebook took seven. <clears throat> you are just an 18 year, 35 year old woman. No, let's, let's get involved in something that adds unto us. When last did you really read a book? If you are not careful, you see that internet makes someone lazy in some legitimate things. I found out that black people don't know how to use phones. We use it to chat and chat. You, you, you see students that we have two phones. Why? Who knows you? <laughs> who, are you who are you contacting or something? No, no, no. Let, let, let's build on mental development. Remember, God will create desire in you. You are the one that will feel it in by asking questions, by making tangible decisions, by learning from people that God will bring on your way. The next thing is by acquiring information, real information. I come on Facebook regularly on my birthday period. The last birthday I, I wrote there, I said, if you don't greet me, you are right. I said, those of us that only come on Facebook on our birthday, we do not worthy of greeting or being greeted. It's the truth. 
because I only come on on my birthday. A lot of people greeted me for my birthday. I am yet to say thank you. Sometimes it will cross my mind. I'll be like, how do I say thank you to everybody? I'll come back on my birthday again next year. So if you don't greet me, you are right. But one of the reasons why it made me like that is that I say it made me because it's Facebook that made me like that. When I just got introduced to Facebook, and I, it was so interesting. You see this person, oh, this is my secondary school mate. This is my primary school school. And I just look at it, I've spent three hours. I'm like, no, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. If I get involved with this, it will take all my life. I don't want to be a liar like many people. That you will say you are 40 year old, but you are only 24. I don't want Facebook to use my years. So, I only go there when I want to post things. Everyone cannot be like me, or else Facebook will not be interesting. So, continue as you are. But, <laughs> but, Let's make sure we get involved with activities that we had on Toronto. You don't have what to give by wish. You have what to give by actually acquiring it. How many have gone for training this year? God wants often say go for training. You are the one that we decide. What God does is to build the desire. That thing that wants to be, make you a leader, that is where God comes in. We are the ones that we feel it in. We are the ones that we feel it in. So, feel it in by equipping yourself with information. Feel it in by equipping yourself with appropriate information. Sometimes I will ask somebody, come and teach me this. Come and teach me this. Last week, I was supposed to do something. Someone was supposed to do something for me. Then he was delaying for four days. I said, what is all this? I just called someone. You know how to do this. Come and teach me for four hours. I'll pay you off. Because I don't want to be cornered. Get information. Hard to yourself. I don't know why God is limiting me. God doesn't limit nobody. Why will God limit you? Why will God limit me? No, it's you and me. I didn't know some things when I was growing up. I thought that God is the one that pegs the growth of a church. I used to think like that. I used to think like, maybe God made me a small pastor. And I was a small pastor till I retire. Then I started thinking. I found out that we have a lot to do when it comes to church growth than God. Paul plant, Apollo waters. God brings the increase. If we plant Apollo waters, God brings the increase. I want you to understand that one. You know, he's talking about the word. <clears throat> Paul was planting the word. Apollo was teaching. Teaching is watering. God is the one that results, that leads, that causes, that gets the word to increase, take over, prevail in our life, in our spirit. But when it comes to Church members multiplying. We have a lot to do. I didn't know. I didn't know. Sometimes when people go for growth, uh, church growth uh, seminar, I always look at them as if they are kana. No. We need to think. You and me have a part to play. It's not only church growth. What about the growth of your business? I know local people think, Somebody is after them. But you are not local. But we need to acquire the knowledge. But I want to round up by saying that we are in an unusual situation. 
What gets you here <laughs> won't get you the, to the next level. We need to acquire more knowledge. This is the way God operates. You remember the children of Israel? When they were in Egypt, in captivity, they were there for years. They needed to be liberated to the next level. But God was in that. God couldn't help them. I know it sounds funny when you say God couldn't help people. But God couldn't help them. Why? They limited God. You have read that the Bible talks about man limiting the Holy One of Israel. So it's possible for man to limit God. And one of the reasons why they were limiting God is their mentality. So for them to get out of the level where they were, they needed introduction. They needed another level of knowledge. I believe that is why God brought someone that was taught differently. Look at Moses. Moses was trained in the palace. Moses understood democracy. He understood freedom. So God sent him there to help them to leave the level they were to the next level. Why? He had a different knowledge. My brother and sister, the knowledge that got you to where you are in business may not survive the next level because of the way things are now. The other day, I sent one guy to go and buy 100 naira bread. I regretted it. I should have, I should have eaten the 100 naira note. And because it was bigger than the bread. <laughs> it was bigger than the bread. Things are strangely, as in strangely bad. You need a different knowledge to get out of here. You are doing business. And you are still following the usual formula. No, it's high time we sit down and come up with a different level of knowledge. Or else, we will just be like the children of Israel in slavery. Guess what? They actually stayed there extra 40 years. Why? God needed somebody with a better knowledge to get them out. So Moses had to be born. Moses had to grow. They stayed extra. God doesn't do things like that without thinking. He must have sought among them and didn't find no one. Of course, it is obvious. There was no one. How do you know, pastor? Because when Moses went out and rescued one of the children of Israel from, and killed the Egyptians, the Bible said that there was no witness, but they had in the palace. So how did they hear? The same fellow that was rescued must have been the one that went there because of his mentality. He kept thinking, even if it's for my sake, we don't have a right to kill the leaders. Egyptians are masters. That mentality killed him. He was the one that was rescued. He was the one that still went to go and tell. I don't care whether you rescue me. What is wrong is wrong. <laughs> mentality. We need a different level. That is why sit down and, and think. I was talking to a pastor two weeks ago, and he told me that over 50 people in the last one year had left his church to go abroad. Canada, England, U.S., everywhere, even Ghana. You know, that was about a few years ago. I used to laugh when they talk about the strength of the currency of Republic of Benin or something. The one near us here. I used to laugh. Do you know their currency is stronger than our own now? It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's strange. So the knowledge that got you and me here it will not survive to get us to the next level. No, it cannot. It can't. So we need to improve. Not just improve on what we know. <laughs> we need to have a higher understanding. This is time of crisis. Business is not as usual. We need to acquire that. That is why when you have seminars on how to survive in crisis, or depression, or whatever, 
It's that time we start thinking and studying along that line because this is an unusual period. Even pastors, we need to know how to strategize on collecting offering now. <laughs> because it's not that people don't love God. Why you don't have? Why do, you can't give what you don't have. So it's a time for rigorous study, definite, well-targeted, specialized on that training. That's what we need now to survive. That's what we need now to survive. That is why you and me, we've got to be on our toes. Or else, we won't have. Do you know that someone asked me many years ago and said, Pastor, I said, Pastor, how do you know what to teach? Is it that God will be telling you every time? I said, no. You look at what your members need and teach them. 70% of the time, that's how you will teach. What they need presently. That is why, even when it comes to program these days, there are some certain areas that we should concentrate on. But you know, the most beautiful thing is this. There is no better time to have church growing bigger than this. Yeah, there, there is no better time than to have church grow bigger than this. I, I taught on divine healing on the radio today. I didn't really get to teach much. And uh, someone about three, about a month and a half ago, sent text to me and said, Pastor, don't forget to teach people this healing. Don't concentrate too much. And I laugh. I said, number one, you have not really been sick. Number two, you don't, you don't understand that God is not stupid. If God is healing people now, he knows that we need it now. God also look at what people need. My brother, before somebody leaves in Bere, we go to hospital. Except he is forced. Because the little money he has, he has to eat, he has to survive. You don't know that they do run from uh, UCH. Ah, Family members will run. They will leave their sick there. The sick also will run. <laughs> if the sickness does not affect his legs. Some of them will go with bed sheets. Ah, because they don't have anywhere to go to. The other day, there was prison break. And I told someone, I said, you will realize many people will come back. He said, why? I said, they can't live outside. People that have been living outside are struggling to survive. You want somebody to come from prison? How will they survive? Many of them will walk back. It's the truth. Why do you think, sis, think someone who was in prison escaped or acquitted eventually will still commit crime and come back? They can't survive outside. It's tough. That is why we need knowledge. So this is high time you and me need to sit down. And read and read and read and study. We are in a peculiar situation. We need a different knowledge to come out. Family members will tell you that taking care of children today is, is different from yesterday. Children of today, they are different from that of yesterday. There are many things they do normally now. It's abnormal to us. So you need a different knowledge in, in bringing them up. We are in a peculiar situation. You can't give what you don't have. You don't have by wishing. You need to learn to ask questions. You need to learn to make decisions. You need to learn from people that God will bring on your way. You need to acquire knowledge by seminars, by reading, by trainings. When you do all that, you can have, then you can give. You can't give unless you have, but you can have uh, without, number one, asking questions. That is where everything begins. Why am I where I am? How do I get to where I'm going to? Do you even know where you are going to, to start with? When you start with questions like that, eventually me and you will be able to say like John and Peter, what we have, we give unto you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. 
we don't understand everything about you. Because you know the situation we are in before the foundation of the world. <laughs> so you are equipped for it. You know about it. You know how we can survive. Thank you for a little here, a little there. We will get there. We'll be able to stand and say, God has helped us. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone here that may we be equipped to be ready to get to where we ought to be in life in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, thank you for enlightening us, bringing forth understanding, and we will get there. Father, we trust you for the second service where you will impart us with spiritual ability to be able to get there. We have looked at the natural side. We look at the spiritual side in the second service. We trust you to stretch forth your mighty hands and do that which no man can do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Wow. It's an unusual message this morning. If you are not thinking, you should not be here after that message. You shouldn't be here. I'm sure that it's a message that should make us to really think. You need to begin to ask questions about where you're going to. You need to begin to ask questions about the methodology you're adopting right now to get there. You need to begin to ask questions about the methodology you need to adopt to get there. Second thing, you need to be decisive. You know, the Bible says that a double-minded man cannot get anything from God. In actual fact, a double-minded man cannot get anything done. You know, the part I like most, that some of us, social media has taken five, ten years out of our lives. I think Pastor Sheon introduced that we have to read a book a month. And there's been a lot of, I, I understand, there's been, but, but I, I think Pastor, Pastor Mishori, we talked about this yesterday. I was saying that, the truth of the matter is that you can read four books in a month. You just need to cut off maybe your social media activities. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked how many books you will get done. You will get to read. I think somebody, there was a research that says that if you want to see um, the distance you have traveled, that most, an average person travels about 10 kilometers on Facebook. Because on Facebook you are scrolling and scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling. Before you know it, you've already done about 10 kilometers if you're actually trekking. And what are the things? You, fantastic people of his, somebody said, do you know that Twitter, Twitter has how many characters? 160. But do you know that the back end of Twitter is not 160 characters? What drives Twitter is not 160 characters. I want us to just bow our heads and just make a decision this morning. Listen, listen. Pastor Badi said it this morning. It's easier, it's, and I think it's always a methodology that as human beings we adopt. We want to push and put the blame on somebody else. We don't want to take responsibility. He's talked about the economy a bit. And someone is saying that but it's, the, it's the president. Yes, it's the president that might have cost it. But do you know that your own life can be better even in this economy if you will just take the right decisions and the right steps?
The Bible also says in the book of James is that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. It's also very important for us to note that when we ask God, God drops instructions, God drops ideas in our hearts. And like Pastor Badia has reminded us this morning, it is our duty to begin to take the step, to begin to do the research, to begin to possibly go for apprenticeship, go for training programs, to equip ourselves. Lord God, we just ask of you this morning that you will indeed help us. Grant us strength by your spirit in our inner man. Lord, grant us strength. Just grant us strength. Grant us strength. For us to be able to go the long haul. For us to be able to make the necessary sacrifice. For us to imbibe the necessary discipline. For us to apply ourselves to the things that will make our lives better. That will make the lives of our children better. For us to commit ourselves to the necessary discipline. That will move us to the next level that you have shown unto us. Father, we ask of you this morning. And we ask, oh God, Lord, that your spirit will nudge our hearts. Your spirit will nudge our hearts. Your spirit will continually nudge our hearts for us to do the right things, for us to have our priorities right, and for us to begin to act. Because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Lord, help us to begin to apply our hearts to begin to do the necessary things that will add unto us and will make us better human beings. Father, we exalt and we honor you this morning. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. Please, can I encourage us and as well those who are online joining church with us this morning. I think it's a message for us to go back again, to listen to again and again. And thank you, Pastor uh, Reverend Bade. Thank you this morning. It's also in the line direction we've been moving, especially in the leadership. We will begin to get the workforce and members of the church involved as we go along. It's touched on several things. It's also touched on go uh, church growth this morning, which are some of the things that we are looking at at the leadership. So please, can we go back and listen to the message again? I just want to encourage us. You are, there are a lot of things you will have missed out in the message go back let's go back listen to it but more importantly while we are listening listen to me while we are listening it's important for you to also have a, a, a notebook with you and you are jotting not the message really but an action plan for example he shared with us and said ask questions what are the questions you are going to ask ask yourself what are the decisive decisions if there's any word like that that you are going to make what are the plans that you are going to begin to put in place? What are the books that you are going to read? What are the trainings that you want to attend? Because what got you here may not get you there. Very, very important. Can we package our tithes and our offering this morning? And it's also very important to give. You know, this morning, Pastor, I didn't just touch on everything. It says that the only way you can get blessed is to give. But it is not just only for you to give without going out there to do something that God will bless. And the reason why you also give is that God opens the channels of heaven to reveal unto you the places that you should put your money, your resources, your leg, your business into. So let's package our tithes, let's package our offering this morning as we give and we trust God. For his release on our, of abundance, for his release of revelation upon us this morning. Can we just rise, please rise with your offering in your hand. If you are using your phone, you can just use your phone as, um, as a point of contact. The Bible says that when we bring our tithes and our offering into his house, it says what? It says that I will open the windows of heaven. It says that and I will pour out a blessing 
But he also says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I want us to proclaim that upon ourselves this morning as we give. As we give. As we give. I know most of us here, this service is focused on career and business. I want you to just focus it as well on your career and on your business. That Father, this morning I obey you. I obey your word. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, the windows of heaven are opened upon me. Revelation, insight, floods my heart. I know what to do. I know the steps I, I need to take. And I have that courage and boldness in my spirit to be able to do so. But Lord God, I also thank you for your word that says that the devourer is rebuked for my sake. Which means that sickness will have no dwelling in my place. Which means that everything that will take my money out without being, uh, how do I put it? Without being productive. Every unnecessary or unproductive spending is rebuked for my sake. It's rebuked over my business. It's rebuked over my family. It's rebuked over my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we honor you with the substance that you have given unto us. Trusting in you because there is a shower of abundance that is coming upon us. And Father, we receive it with thanksgiving this morning. And we walk in the light and in the revelation of this. We give you praise and glory this morning. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. The usher should please wait on us. If you're doing, uh, into the, uh, transferring into the church's account, please, you can go ahead. The account details are already projected on the screen in the auditorium as well, on the screen um, online uh, as well. So please let's um, do that. Just quick announcements before we go for our coffee break. Uh, this Friday... Uh, Pastor Badio will still be with us, the network service, starting by 9.30 a.m. So please, uh, let's get prepared uh, for that. This Friday, we have our monthly Friday prayer meeting from 5 p.m. in the evening. And we are looking at the, the topic or the theme, Wu Adao, O Great Mountain. That's from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. It's a prayer time. It's in person in church here. So please, let's make it a date as we come to pray and to also learn together. Uh, so that's the major announcement that we have for us this morning. So we'll go for our coffee break and we'll be back for the network service by 9.30 a.m. God bless you.